Hi, my name is Todd Walter. I work at National Instruments in our Embedded Systems Group. I'd like to share with you today some of the things we've been working on in our labs. Specifically, I want to talk about one of the new APIs or one of the new features we're working on for our Compact Rio product line. Now, in Compact Rio, we've got a real-time processor, an FPGA that you can program and define uh, in hardware what's going to execute, and a set of C-series I.O. modules that will give you the A to D and D to A and signal conditioning to connect to outside signals. One of the pieces of feedback that we've gotten on this platform is that some of our customers would like more flexibility in the API from LabVIEW FPGA to the modules themselves. Specifically, some requests have come up around tighter control over timing to those modules, better configuration or more access to some configuration parameters that may not have a, a programmatic uh, API to them, uh, as well as a lower level, more uh, flexible interface to the modules themselves. So we've been working on something, and it's now posted uh, in an early version on NI Labs, called the Composable C-Series API. What this does is it exposes the pins uh, to the module and at a very low level allows you to control what data will be passed back and forth to the module. In this case, you're directly passing the, the bytes on to the SPI bus uh, for the modules. And this can give you a lot more flexibility. So let me show you an application that I built with this. And what I'm going to do is in one uh, bit file and one FPGA image, I'm going to have the ability to swap out a variety of different modules into a slot and still read and write data. Now normally the only way to do this would be to read the module and then to load a different pre-compiled bit file. In this case I'm going to do it all with one bit file. So I've downloaded uh, this API and I've built a LabVIEW application using it. So this is my LabVIEW project. Uh, I'm connected right now to this chassis, the CRIO 9074. And once I downloaded this API, I was able to add modules under a new type. You can see this says NI Dynamic. So this is that different API to the module. And then I've written a LabVIEW FPGA uh, application uh, to communicate using this new API. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run uh, this FPGA application. Uh, this will be running the entire time on the backplane, and you'll be able to see some handshaking going f uh, back and forth to an RT application that I also wrote with it. I'll go ahead and open that RT application and run it. And once this is downloaded, the first thing it's going to do is I'm going to query uh, on the FPGA uh, the modules and read the EEPROM to get back data of what is the module type. So you can see right now, in the first slot, what I've called here slot 0, I have a 9476. Now this module is a digital output module. Uh, in slot 1, I have a 9263. Now this is an analog output module. And in the next slot, what I've called here slot 2, I have a 9215. And you can uh, see here that the 9263 and 9215 are wired up to each other. So if I output a signal on the analog output, I should be able to read it back on that next module. Now on the application I wrote uh, running on the real-time processor, I've got a set of application configuration settings uh, that I can make. This is the way I chose to expose them. Uh, so I can choose a clock. Right now I'm going to clock them all off the same clock that I've created on the FPGA. And I can also choose the data going to these modules. How am I going to pass that down? So right now I have a multiplexed one FIFO down, and then I have these virtual input FIFOs I've also created. So I'm going to pass the 46 through this uh, virtual FIFO 1 and 63 through FIFO 2. I'll click done. You can see some handshaking going back and forth. And now I'm going to read data back. So FIFO 1, as we call, was the 9476. FIFO 2 was the 9263. We can see as I change the values I'm outputting on this 63 via slider, uh, we can see the corresponding inputs coming through uh, on this 9215. Uh, these two charts, of course, uh, have no data because uh, the modules are not input modules, they're output modules. And the 9476, if I uh, turn on and off uh, that output, we can see uh, the LED lighting up that is connected up to, uh, to that digital output. Uh, so I'm going to now uh, change out the modules. Um, now I'm going to do this. I'm stopping my RT application just because of the way that I uh, wrote this state machine. I wouldn't have to had I written it a little differently. Um, but you'll notice the FPGA application is going to continue running the whole time. So I'm never changing out uh, the FPGA bit file. Now I'm going to remove this 9476. 
and I'm going to put in uh, another module. So what I have here, uh, this is another analog input module. This is the 9234. Uh, it's a simultaneous sampling uh, delta sigma module. Uh, and this one is connected up uh, to this demonstration box, which has an accelerometer connected up uh, to uh, a system that has an unbalanced fan, so we can create some vibration. So again, without stopping the FPGA, I'm going to plug this into that first slot. And I'm going to run this again, so it'll go back through and again ask the FPGA which modules are in which slots. So you can see now it's telling me the 34 uh, is in this first slot. And because the 34 has is a more sophisticated module, it has some additional configuration. And so I've built this pane to let me enter some of that data, turning on and off uh, the AC coupling. Uh, I can also uh, go through and uh, enable uh, IEPE uh, excitation. And because this is a self-time module, it has an onboard clock, which is going to control the ADC. And so I can choose what sample rate I want. And so I'm going to set this uh, to a 1.6 kilosample rate. I'll now download that configuration information. It's going to ask me the application configuration. So since this is self-timed, I have no clock uh, for it. Again, there's also uh, it's, a, it's a module that's going to return data to me, so I'm not going to pass it data. Uh, these ones I'll go ahead and leave and clock together, and I'll put this on FIFO uh, 1, although I could leave it on 2 as well. Uh, it'll now pass down this uh, configuration parameters, and I'll start collecting data back from all of my modules. So I'll set this to the 9263. So again, you can see as I uh, change my analog outputs, I'm reading that back in on my analog input. And this is the data I'm getting back uh, from that 9234. So if I increase the rotational speed of this fan, you can see uh, the vibration, of course, increases, and I'm getting this data back. Uh, from my 9234. So I was able to do this again without changing out the I.O. module or without changing out the bit file that was loaded for the I.O. module. So I'll use the same uh, Lavi FPGA bit file. I'm going to go ahead and the code that's on here, I will post this onto the same uh, NI lab. So I'd encourage you to take a look at it. If this kind of functionality is interesting for you in your applications, we'd love to hear feedback on the API, on the demos that we're working on with it, and what kind of additional features you would like to see. Thank you.